But, you know, it's interesting that so often people don't know it's what they wanted yeah. until it yeah, happens yeah, 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 yeah. and it turns out to be a blessing in disguise. But yes. they wouldn't have ever discovered that had they not been sort of flung into this exactly. ocean of, of um, you and know, of being that, alone. I think that was true with me, too. I think that I felt that way, mm-hmm. that, um, that everything kind of came together once it came apart. And mm-hmm. I think that that's a common thing for men and women. It's just, uh, you know, when you're in in a situation that's wrong you and you get out of it you you realize how much better you feel yeah and discover more about who you are who you are yeah and what you say about you know his round head and and also every little thing he does <laughs> yeah. uh, every little mannerism the way he chews his food yeah, and the yeah. way he sleeps everything yeah. about him is driving you crazy yeah did you have those feelings in any long-term relationship that you're just feeling like absolutely sick of the person? I totally broke. I, I broke up with a guy because I didn't like the way he chewed. <laughs> mm-hmm. But that so was I wasn't married to him. Okay. I couldn't even get past the dating situation because <laughs> when he took me out to dinner, I didn't like the way he chewed. So, Did you um, hear about the two turtles in Austria? Yeah. Two turtles who have been together for the last 115 years oh. uh, at an Austrian zoo. Um, are no longer on good terms. What? They're unhappy with each other what? after 115 years of marriage. No. I know. Oh, that is so sad. It's so sad. What they've, are they going to do? Had, they can't stand one another. Oh, my God. Um, and uh, the the girl turtle bit the male turtle, <gasps> and they had to be separated. And um, I said yesterday, I'm not surprised at all. I mean, can you imagine spending 115, 115 years with the same person? years? I'm surprised one of them is not dead already. So what are they going to do? Are they going to try to find new 115-year-old well, mates? The, the zoo. I'm sorry about what that. What is that? Is that your phone? I think so. I thought I turned it off. Um, the zoo is trying to reconcile them. Um, I mean, you you know. You that is so cute It, and it sad. is. It is sad. It's like they're trying to give. It's like Matt McGrath with your dogs. Like yeah. the zoo is trying to give the turtles marriage counseling. Oh, and um, they're not having it. They're, no, they're like, it's They've, over. They, they're like, it's over. I'm done. I'm branching out. It's been 115 years. <laughs> I'm done. <laughs> that is the cutest thing and saddest thing I've it's ever really heard. It's sad. <laughs> Heartbreaking. So, um, I mean, I guess, you know, I think it's probably normal, maybe possibly even healthy to want to kill your spouse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think, yeah, it's part of it. Yeah. Part of the process. If you're just joining us, we're here with actress, writer, producer, and director Polly Draper, and you can see her on stage at Bay Street Theater. She's starring in a new play called My Brilliant Divorce by Geraldine Aaron, and it's running uh, June 24th. Let me grab this. This is. I think he this... is trying to turn off his phone right now that is just never stopping. Why oh, is I it, knew it ringing it's a, so it's much? It's an alarm. It's not a oh, ring. It's an alarm. Oh, it's trying to why. wake you up. Because I turned off my ringer, and I'm like, well, how is it ringing? Well, it's an alarm. That I forgot I said. So um, anyway, <laughs> wait, wait. It, you were supposed to wake up at this time. Um, oh gosh, have you I'm been so asleep embarrassed. this whole time? Yes, I've been actually <laughs> just now waking up. Thank goodness. Um, thank God I set that alarm. Yeah, thank uh, God. Now, now we'll get into some interview. <laughs> so um, you're married to Michael Wolf. Yes. Um, who's a very accomplished musician. Yeah, amazing. Would Genius. you tell us how you met? Uh, we were on the. Uh, I was on the Arsenio Hall show, and he was the band leader. And he hit on me in the hair and makeup trailer. And oh, that's sexy! Both of us had that really. Oh, it sounds sexy to till I say this next part, which is that we both had that really big '80s hair. Oh wow! So I guess in the '80s it was sexy, but we both had took you know that extra time to get our hair really as big as possible. So um, I guess that's why we had time to spend together and really bond and then he sent me flowers after the thing telling me that he was really glad that i hadn't turned my feet backwards and walk forwards which it was a talent that i have that i can um i can turn my feet back where i used to be able to now i can't uh uh, turn my feet backwards and walk forwards oh my god i actually could up until the time i got a hip replacement for riding mechanical bull so you can't do it anymore i can't do it so uh, sadly That was one of the ca- casualties of riding mechanical bull. Anyway, I did it on another talk show, and it was—it's disgusting to see. So he 
sent me flowers saying, thank you for not doing it on, on our show. <laughs> oh, my then, God. And so then after that, uh, we went out and we started, you know, dating. He he kept bringing me 101 roses every time he showed up on a date. And I thought, Jesus, this guy, how much he's, he's this is going to break him. He's not. <laughs> and then I find out that on his route to work, there's Arturo's flower store, 101 roses, 20 bucks. So <laughs> I thought, OK, well, it's not. <laughs> It's not as quite as romantic as I thought. Right. <laughs> so you and Michael have two sons together, yeah. and uh, as Matt you mentioned, Alex, yeah, uh, you Wolf. really have such an you have such an artistic and talented family. Yeah, uh, it's an empire. Yeah, both of your sons are rock stars. Yep. Uh, Matt and Alex Wolf, stars of Nickelodeon's The Naked Brothers Band, uh, a rock mockumentary which you created and I wrote created, and yeah. executive produced and directed. How did you come up with this idea? Um, they were extraordinarily talented so it made it kind of easy they um nat was writing music since he was five alex was playing the drums since he was three and not 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 stupid kid music really good music like so good that my husband was like can i use that song in one of my jazz concerts like that kind of stuff and um wow. They wrote, it was rock music. They thought they were the Beatles, and we the whole family had to pretend to be the Beatles all the time. Like we, I, um, Alex was Ringo, Nat was Paul, I was had to be George because <laughs> <laughs> I had to take the leftovers. But anyway, poor old George, he was great too. I know. But, but George was the you know George was the least. Un Michael was was John and we would just walk around pretending to be the Beatles all the time watching all the Beatles stuff and uh that is so cute yeah so th so it I think they sort of thought they were famous anyway mm -hmm. and so um they had this little band in preschool and, and uh and they played they did a um a, a concert for the firefighters after 9-11 for our local fire station all nat's idea the older one and um he wrote a beautiful song to the firefighters they made forty five thousand dollars for the kids of the firefighters wow then they became sort of local celebrities playing at little gay and lesbian christmas parties and the firefighters picnic and one-year-old birthday parties and fantastic stuff. so i thought you know, it'd be really fun is pretending that this band is huge, like the Beatles doing like a like a mock documentary, like Spinal Tap. I called it Spinal Tap meets Little Rascals, and um, so um, I did it with. It, it was more like a family project. My brother uh, put the money in uh, with the um, understanding that he could be in it. And he, so he played the principal of the school. Mm -hmm. I had a wrote in a principal of the school. Each uh, the, my niece, my niece played the babysitter. My husband played the father. My nephews all played another kids band that grew up and got unpopular called mm -hmm. the Timmerman Brothers. <laughs> they were hysterical. My three nephews who were like six, four each. And it became um, it, it went to the Hamptons Film Festival, won mm -hmm. and got. Nickelodeon, uh, Albie Hecht from Nickelodeon to see it. And he said, this is going to be a hit TV series. And, and, uh, he, you know, the, that the rest was history. I didn't really, uh, he was, he did it all. I just, he just kind of said he m manipulated it all. So it all happened. It had, you know, it gotten great. I think kids, when they watched it, they thought it was real. We did it like it's a joke, uh, not a joke, but a kind of a, a mockumentary. A mockumentary. Yeah. And the irony is that they have become huge. Exactly. It was so crazy watching that happen where, you know, after the first season, they thought they were just everything was the same. And then they went to um, Fire Island and... Some, to play for the gays, just yeah. <laughs> exactly the gay and lesbian Christmas, but and um, and they were they were mobbed and they couldn't go anywhere and 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 we did this one, to try to get a location cheap in the second season we we said oh the boys will sign autographs thinking that there would be like ten or fifteen kids there mm -hmm. well there were. 
5,000 kids there. We had to get police escorts out of there. Alex was only seven years old and he was crying and saying, oh, and I'm like, what have I done to my kids? I don't know how this happened. I just, we did it as a family film. You know, we got our friends in it like Uma Thurman and Julianne Moore and to, to, to ensure that it looked like they were famous, you know, that they'd have these famous people mm -hmm. talking to them and stuff and Cindy Lauper and stuff. But we had no idea that they be actually famous from it. So how have they handled being in the spotlight and getting so much attention? They're kind of amazing, I have to say. They're, I, maybe it's because they grew up famous. Maybe it's because Michael and I were in the business, too, mm -hmm. and kind of told them about the ups and downs of it. I think that they've been pretty awesome about it. You know, I think the hardest thing for them is when one gets a movie and the other doesn't have it. Like in October... Alex, the littler one, was doing a movie with Brendan Fraser that he starred in, and it hasn't come out yet, but he's unbelievable in it. And and Nat was feeling kind of, you know, like, oh, God, no one's ever going to want to pick me again and whatever. Meanwhile, Nat had done one with Jane Fonda the summer before and mm -hmm. Catherine Keener that just came out. And now Nat has done four movies in a row and Alex is feeling like and Alex just missed getting this other one so I think he's feeling bad and the two brother two of them were going to work on another album this summer but Nat's busy doing this other movie so I think there's a little bit of that yeah but yeah. that that's the hardest part for them I think and do you have any words of wisdom for them or at any point mm -hmm. have either of your boys come to you for advice yeah they 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 we're pretty we're a pretty strong family unit, and the thing that Michael and I always say to them is, life is long and things go in and out and in and out. And um, both Michael and I can tell them that that you know I had the screaming people for me. Well, actually, thirty something fans never scream. They would say, "I love that wonderful thing you did with your hand." <laughs> and, you know, Michael always jokes about how he was on the Arsenio Hall show and they'd all say, you know, and and on the same night this guy with a big sandwich board that said, "Girls, girls, girls, live nude girls" comes up and says, "Hey man, how you doing?" <laughs> and and someone comes up to me and says, "I love the delicate way that you did, you know, cuz 30 something was so esoteric and his show was so man of the people." My mom was a huge 30 something fan. Yeah. She, yeah, everybody's mom was. Now mm -hmm. I'm just kind of in the age where everyone says my mom. Was, yeah. <laughs> I know you my must get my grandmother really <laughs> liked thirty something. You must get yeah. that a lot. Yeah, yeah. Mm. <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm not sad about that. That's a real. It's, it was a wonderful show, and I was proud to be on it. So, whatever, whatever residual fame I have from that, I, I I'm appreciative of. And do you keep in touch with any of your? Oh, your sure. Cast all, members, all of them. Yeah. We had a really fun time because last year was the 20th reunion or something, and they, we did a lot of press stuff together, and we were having just so much fun together. Just, you know, it's, it's, it's like getting together with relatives because we're, you know, we were like brothers and sisters in the good and bad way. Like, we'd always be like, you know, bah, 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 sometimes. <laughs> yeah. But it's like but a family. ultimately, we just love each other, all of us. It's wonderful. So, yeah. Well, this afternoon, I've been speaking to actress Polly Draper, and you can catch her on stage in My Brilliant Divorce, a one-woman show by Geraldine Aaron, and it's playing at Bay Street Theater through June 24th. Come see it. Bay it's gotten great reviews, and it's selling out. So you yes, it is. Bay Street Theater Except in Sag Harbor. for the Tuesday Harbor. group. They're not invited back. Exactly. Uh, for tickets and more info, you can call the box office at 725-9500 or go to baystreet.org. Uh, Polly Draper, thank you so much for joining My us pleasure. today. My pleasure. So nice to meet you. It's been a lot of fun.